So I will only consider the Fourier transformation of the special part, not the temporal part, like this thing. So this is a kind of transformation. So x bar is our new coordinate, x variable. Okay. So this I can write as e raised for g s. Now differentiate it. So what it gives me? So it gives me g dx bar. That's equal to g e raised for g x dx. Clear? So what you get? So this g and g cancels out. Okay, so you get dx bar square as e raised for 2 gx dx. Clear? Now let's write this. Uh, you are having e raised for 2 gx dx square. Okay, for that I will write this dx bar square. So which gives me this dx square that's equal to minus. What is e raised for 2 gx? So you are having e raised for gx is 1 plus gx bar. So I will write it as simply, okay, 1 plus gx bar and there is will be a square, okay. You are having a minus dz square plus dx bar square plus dy square plus dz square. Okay, so now let's put c back. So these are having the dimensions of what? Uh, coordinate space so I will multiply this dt square dt will be multiplied by c velocity of light okay so it will be some c square so this gx bar this has the dimensions of what uh, velocity square so you need to divide it by velocity square because one is dimensionless so this uh, uh, has to be dimensionless then you have to divide by what c square what is the g it is meter per second square is it so what is x it's meter, eh? so it's meter square, second square, divided by c square. So, okay, we'll get c square, d g square, plus g bar square. Okay, so I will now, okay, so let's see that. Okay? Yes? I have put c back, eh? okay? So now, um, okay, so now look here, so, when we are moving from an inertial frame to the non-inertial frame of reference, so we are getting a line element like this thing. Why the, so these are actually the coefficients of the metric, is it? So what this is? So this I can write as G00, is it? Can I write it? Then what this will, okay, so I can write it like this thing. G00, C square, dt square, then plus G11 dx bar square plus g two two dy square plus g three three dz square. Are enough? Okay. There is no cross terms x y y z or z t. Clear? So much about. So in other words, what I am getting in a non-inertial frame of reference, I am getting a metric which depends on the coordinates. So much about. So here, okay, so you can identify the G00 with this very thing, G11 as identity, G22 as identity, G33 as identity, clear? In other words, I can write in the, since uh, acceleration is same as the gravitation, in presence of the gravitation then, we can write the metric as some GIA, let's say, DXI, DXA. Can we write? Where G I K is in general dependent, okay, space time dependent, okay, function. So much Got it? So in flat space time, what this G is, or if you look at the Minkowski space, this G is simply R, we write it in terms of eta. So that's minus one, 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 a constant matrix. Here, the matrix is what? A coordinate dependent function. So much over? Okay. So what does it mean? What does it mean? So the gravity effect is the geometry, is it? Or in other words, the uh, you are there is an interplay between the gravitation and the geometry, is it? So much over? So we'll see actually the geometry gives rise to the gravitation, and the gravitation curves the uh, space time or the geometry is it so samajama so now let's look at everybody got it so in presence since we are looking at the equivalence principle 
we are uh, looking at an observer who is moving at a uniform uh, acceleration. So a uniform accelerated frame is equivalent to a frame of reference which contain, which has gravitation, is it? So in other words, in presence of the gravitation by equivalence principle, the metric is, uh, we get a metric which is uh, dependent on the function, uh, uh, space dependent on the function, clear? So here it is actually a trivial example. So while we get only these, uh, this time coordinate, okay, which gets affected by this gravitation. So much it has an implication. It has an implication. The clocks run slower in the gravitational field. Is it? Or the gravitational field affects the clocks. That's why I put it in uh, this very fashion. Huh? So much you will see in a moment why the, all these components will get uh, mixed. So much So you are so much. Okay. So any question? Any question? Okay, we'll uh, in a moment uh, see. Okay, so this, uh, okay, so let me put here. You can say that uh, the coordinate dependence of this very metric arise because you move from an inertial coordinate to a non-inertial frame of reference, is it? Non-inertial, okay, we'll take non-inertial generally as a curvilinear coordinate. Eh? We'll see actually the difference, eh? okay? So we'll see in a moment the difference uh, between the things, okay? So first let's analyze this. Uh, this very metric. Eh? So let's analyze this very equation. Okay. So, okay. So what we are having? So we can write this g x bar as phi. So it is simply the gravitational potential. So the gravitational potential. So therefore, our this g s square is simply for you know, one plus phi by c square, c square, d square, yes, let me write, yeah. okay, so let me now write dx square, eh? so simple, okay, so dy square, dz square, okay, okay, so what we are having, the first result, okay, so let's interpret these things, okay, so let's interpret, so we are having two results at hand, gravitational scaleness, so these are the two results at hand. Gravitational fields are locally indistinguishable. Indistinguishable from accelerated frames, from uniformly accelerated frames. So that's your weak balance principle, is it? Okay. And second is Second, this is the result of what we have at hand, and second is in the accelerating frames are described by a line element like this thing. Huh? Okay, so let's solve this as equation one. Accelerated frames. So this is a very important result. Accelerated frames are described by line element. Feel it? So much more. In other words, in the gravitational field, the line elements will be described by. Um, in general, oh, okay, why the coefficients are dependent on space and time in general, okay? So these two provide us the thing, what we already <coughs> know, what we have derived from the equivalence principle, okay? So these two elements give us the gravitational field affects the clocks. Eh? The gravitational field affects the such a way that to okay, simply. Is it true? So now look here, uh, you are having this gravitational field the same as the accelerated frame, uniformly accelerated frame, and the metric for the accelerated frame is this thing. Okay, so now which component is uh, effective? Here. So for here, only this component is effective. What is the component representing? It is actually the time, clear? So in other words, let's say at some point, Let's consider your frame of reference, okay, while this dx, dy, dz is 0. So much more. So what does it mean? So let's say you are in a stationary frame of reference like this thing. You sit at this very position and flow in time at the same position. Suppose I am here, 
over a period of time i will sit, sit at the okay so i will go to this next height yeah, in the time direction okay समझ रहा हूँ सच देट माई डी एक्स डी वाई एंड डी जेड इज वर्ट जीरो सो वट इट गिवज मी देन सो दिस डी एस इन दैट केस विल गिव मी एक्चुअली द प्रॉपर टाइम इज इट ट्रू सो वट इज अवर प्रॉपर टाइम इन दैट सेंस सो वेन यूर डी एक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो डी वाई इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो दैट मीन योर क्लॉक इज एड्रेस्ट इन द ग्रेविटेशन फील्ड समझ आओ सो इन दैट ओके सो वट इज अवर प्रॉपर टाइम सो प्रॉपर टेल मी so proper time will be given by simply minus d s square okay raised power half divided by c okay is that true so actually the magnitude of this thing so it will be minus d s square you take this minus here since these are zero d s square by c square okay so so much am i so this is the proper time what is that how much is that so it will be simply 1 plus 5 by c square multiplied by time okay so so much am i multiplied by some time let's say time t feel it so in other words in the gravitational this is the result what we already obtained eh? earlier eh? okay so in other words okay so let me write now so this time this t is actually the time measured by the clock in absence of the gravitation this t this tau is a time measured by the clock in presence of the gravitation समझ आओ गॉट इट क्लियर सो इन अदर वर्ड्स ओके सो लेट मी राइट इट दिस वे सो सो दिस कॉम्स कैंस आउट ऑफ दीज टू थिंग्स सो वी राइट देन माय क्लॉक ओके लाइक दिस थिंग लेट मी राइट डेल्टा टी सो दैट इज समथिंग 1 plus pi by c square दिस डेल्टा टी एंड दिस इज द टाइम रेड बाय क्लॉक in absence of gravity okay and this is time where in presence of gravity and in presence of gravity that's why it depends on what phi samajh aa okay is it clear samajh aa so now let's look at a matrix of a clock which is at rest in the gravitational field let's say it is not moving huh? Let's look at in a frame of reference. Yes, where there is a gravitation and the clock is rest at that very frame of reference. Let's try to figure out what should be the line element. Okay. So, समझ आया? So, what is the line element? So, usually we write line element like this thing. In presence of the gravitational field, it will be like this thing. D x i, D x. Feel it? So now we have arrived at this very conclusion. Okay, so let me put it this way: We have arrived at a conclusion from this accelerating frame of reference that, in presence of the gravity, the line element, okay, will be always defined like this thing. Why the g, the metric tensor, will be dependent on the space-time functions? It will depend. It will depend on x space-time coordinates. Clear? So, समझ आया? Now let me consider a clock which is at rest in the gravitational field. Let's say here we are having a clock. Is it? it's at rest in its own frame of reference let's try to figure out what should be the line element for that clock when it is at rest what it means okay so let me write so let's write it so let let me write for a clock for a clock at rest in gravitational field so what it means so i can write like this thing d s square let me write g 0 0 of x So it is dx zero, dx zero. Clear? Then I will write the other components. So what that means? So let's say g zero one, dx zero, dx one plus dx dx all. So much am I? So when it is at rest, what does that mean? So at rest means special components are what zero. So dx one is equal to zero, dx two is equal to zero, dx three is equal to zero. So much am I? so that means all the higher terms that will be zero because they will contain the differential of the coordinates so this contains only the differential of the time dx0 means c dt eh? okay so this means c dt multiplied by dx let's say dx1 is dx clear so summation so it means that for a clock at rest all these terms will be zero so what we get
So we get okay. So we get in that case that simply equal to g zero zero of x c square. Okay. So much am I? It is four o'clock at rest. Eh? So I can't say much. Okay. So now what should be the nature of this g zero zero x? Because in the gravitational field, uh, what is changing? The clocks move slower, is it? Or in other words, the rate of the clocks changes in the gravitational field. So this component gives me this coefficient gives me uh, the rate of the clocks. Or in other words, it will give me the scale at which the clocks are ticking. Because it is multiplying the time. Clear? So no, Shama. In other words, if you are in the gravitational field, the clock is sitting at rest in the gravitational field. This cannot be equal to one. Okay, this cannot be equal to. I mean to say constant. I should say it should not be a constant thing. Is it? So no, that's it. It cannot be a number. Then what it should be? It should be a simple a function of coordinates. So here, what we have figured out for the accelerating observer. So it turn. Okay, so we can say this is simply equal to something. It is actually the proportion to this thing. So the correct is like this. One plus two phi by c square. We can figure it out, eh? So how much, man? So how much, how much? Because in the gravitational field, the clocks are being affected, eh? So that means this g zero 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 x component, uh, it should not be a simple number, okay? Or a constant thing. It should be a dependent on the uh, potential at that very point. So how much, man? Because potential at a given point specifies your gravitation. How strong is the gravitation? Okay, clear? Any problem? Okay, so this is the, uh, these are the consequences what we have already derived. Huh? Okay, now look here. Now if you see g zero zero x is proportional to this potential, is it? So in other words, the metric here. Okay, so this is uh, okay. The metric here. So it will depend upon the potential at which you are evaluating. Let's say the A uh, line element, okay? So, in other words, the potential of the Newtonian mechanics, since phi is the uh, gravitational potential in the Newtonian mechanics, is it? So, you can think it is generalized concept as a metric. So, you can think in general theory of relativity, metric plays the same role as the potential is playing the role in the Newtonian gravity. So, much, man, okay? So, it should be kept in mind. Eh? Because everything what we will be doing is with the metric. Eh? Metric describes your intrinsic geometry of uh, this space-time. So much, am I? Clear? Okay. So, if you have any question, just tell me. So now from here you can see the connection between the geometry and what the gravity. Eh? Okay. So that means uh, the general theory of relativity is actually the theory of what. Geometry. It is a geometrical theory. It, is, it has the geometrical nature. Eh? Okay. Clear? Okay. Now let's move to the general discussion on this very matter. Okay. So if you have any confusion, just tell me. Eh? Because uh, if you have understood this matter, so then I can proceed on. Okay, so now uh, what? How to study the gravitational theory? Okay, so now let's go to the uh, machinery of the general theory of relativity. How we can study the gravitation? So let's look at the electrodynamics first. How we studied the electrodynamics? Okay, so how we uh, did? We take a particle that's in the electromagnetic field. So there are two ways to study the dynamics of a particle in the electromagnetic field. Rather There are, I mean, two aspects. I sh should not say ways. Two aspects of studying the dynamics of a given charged particle in an electromagnetic field. First aspect is that you look at uh, the motion of a particle, charged particle, in the background electromagnetic field, okay? And don't worry about what is the source of the electromagnetic field or how the electromagnetic field itself changes. Is it? 
So you only see the coupling of what? The charged particle with the field. Okay, so this is the first aspect. And second aspect is, so you look at the dynamics of the field itself. What is the source? Okay, that means you are solving the Maxwell's equation. Okay, if you look at uh, the dynamics of the charged particle, you solve actually Lorentz equation, is it? Is that true? But when you look at the dynamics of the field itself, which gives rise to the electromagnetic field, what we call the electromagnetic waves, you solve the Maxwell's equation, is it? So these are the two aspects to study the dynamics of charged particles in electromagnetic field. The similar thing is here, okay? So how? So the uh, it is an analog way. You simply study the motion of the massive particles, let's say a material particle in the background, gravitational field, without worrying about what is the nature or what is the source of the gravitational field. And the second aspect is to look at what? Simply uh, how the gravitational field is generated, okay? Or uh, what is the dynamics of this gravitational field, okay? The equation of motion which describes the dynamics of a particle in presence of the gravitation, that means in presence of a given geometry, we call those equations as the geodesic equations. Okay? Uh, suppose uh, you are having the Newton's second law of motion that gives you the trajectory of the particle. Okay? Or uh, you club it with what? Um, the gravitational potential as, as well. Let's say you are having uh, acceleration is equal to gradient of the potential. Okay? So that will give simply the, so this thing, so let me write d2r by dt2 in the Newtonian gravitation. So this gives you the dynamics of, or the dynamics of the particles in presence of the gravitational field, is it? And the Newton's law of the gravitation, so this very law, so what is that? So this gives you what? So this is a force law that describes the gravity itself. So much, Shaman. So in so the dynamics will be given by like this thing. No, 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 not this thing. The equation, wave equation. We have to figure out the wave equation. This is the same as this thing. So what is the wave equation? So it is the Poisson equation. Eh? Four pi g rho. Clear? So you are having the dynamics of the field is given by this Poisson equation, the wave equation, and the dynamics of the particle in the presence of the gravitation is given by this thing. So when we look from the general theory of relativity, okay, so this equation goes to the geodesic equation. Okay, because geode what this gives me essentially? It is an equation of motion. What it gives? It gives simply the trajectory of the particle in the gravitational potential. Like you are having Lorentz equation, that gives you the trajectory of a particle in the electromagnetic field. Okay, yes. So much sure. what this gives me? This gives me the source of the field itself. So you are having the source of the field is what? Mass. So you calculate that. Eh? In presence of the source, you can calculate what? What is the potential? Like you are having the charges and currents as the source for the electromagnetic field. Clear? In the Maxwell's equation, you are having J and Rho. Clear? They generate your electromagnetic field. Eh? So much sure. Similarly, you are having, although this is Newton's law of gravitation is only uh, a static uh, theory, you can think it is simply as electrostatic theory. There is no dynamics involved at all. So you are having a source, it gives, so this phi is generated by this source. Okay, right? Now, it is generalization here is Einstein equation. Okay, Einstein's equation. First, we will be studying this kind of phenomena. Okay, for that matter, we need to study some geometrical properties of the space. So much, Shaman. Clear? So we will do a simple thing. I mean, we will not go into the detailed, I mean, the mathematical, okay, complicated mathematical details. I will simply introduce certain concepts which will be useful in dealing with these things. Clear? So much, Shaman. So what is our aim? Okay. So the first thing is, first we will write, uh, what are the principles on which general theory of relativity is based? No, any question? Okay, so let's look at. It. So we uh, first we call as the principle of relativity. Uh, principle of general relativity. Okay, it says all observers are equal, whether they are inertial or non-inertial. Every observer. 
this very important. Look at the principle of relate, special theory of relativity. What is that? Only the inertial observers are equivalent. So much more because there is no gravity. Eh? So here we are considering all observers are equivalent. Okay, it should have. You know, this should be clear from uh, the thought experiment we have done. Eh? You are having a free fall motion. Eh? Okay. And second thing is what we call the principle of general covariance. So this, okay, so the equation of physics should have tensorial form. Uh, this uh, will be clear, eh? why it has to be, because, so it is actually the consequence of the first, uh, when you are having all observers are equivalent so it actually naturally gives you the uh, laws of physics should have the tensorial form what does that mean so when you make a transformation from one coordinate to another coordinate system so that means an arbitrary coordinate transformation will it a quantity uh, will transform any physical quantity will transform under that uh, arbitrary coordinate transformation now if it is a tensor it will retain its tensorial property in the another frame so much sure, let's say i will give an example of a vector will it now, if I am defining a vector, okay, so if I make now a general coordinate transformation, any arbitrary co damn coordinate transformation, okay, yeah? so what will happen? So, if it retains its property that it is a vector, so that means my physical quantity retains its identity. Now, if it does not retain its identity, so then what? So, my viewpoint of the velocity should change, okay, but I am saying all observers are equivalent. So that means if an observer has a viewpoint of the velocity, it should remain the same for the another observer. So much on. That's why all the equation must have what? Tensorial property. It is not necessary. Okay, so um, I mean it's not necessary that it should be a scalar quantity. You should be having a tensor quantity on left hand side of an equation and on the right hand side. The quantity is what should appear. They should also transform in the same way what is on the left hand side. So much yes, Okay, this will be, become clear in a moment. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, begin. It. So we'll start with the line element. So now we see in the gravitational field whether you are okay, so whether you are a Till now we have done only the weak gravitational field. Now we will be saying this for uh, whether it's weak or strong, any kind of gravitational field. Okay? okay, so these laws are for any kind of gravitational field, not necessarily the weak one. Okay? okay, so now in presence of the gravitation, we have the line element like this. Okay, so I should put it as X. So it depends on the coordinate. Okay? So if I take my space time to be only four dimensional, I mean three space and four. Okay, so first thing, so this is a uh, coordinate dependent function. Okay, so now let's look at, uh, I will take only the four space time coordinates. That means this I, J, okay, I, K goes from zero, one, two, three. Okay, so these Latin indices move from 0 to 3, but uh, the uh, Greek indices I will take only from 1 to 3. So that is the notation we are following. Okay. So now let's look at this GIK is always a symmetric matrix. Okay. So, much so you can see from this point, you can take this GK here, DXK here, DXR here. That means you can interchange I and K. So this very object will remain. Uh, symmetric, okay? Is this a symmetric quantity if I change? Okay, so let's look at, so you are having dxi, dxk, this is same as what? If you interchange i and k, this is same as, okay, like this thing. So that is same as what? dxi, dxk. So that means it's a symmetric quantity, okay? So it implies this is symmetric. So when you are having a symmetric multiplied by any other function, it means this has to be what? 
So this is this should be symmetric. In what? Symmetric in what? I n. Sorry, I n. In which the indices this object is symmetric, it is I n k. So this must be what? Symmetric. If it is anti symmetric, then it is zero. So much of one. Okay, so let's say if this is anti-symmetric, then this must be anti-symmetric. Okay, so you should know this very rule. It is very simple to prove. Take a matrix which is symmetric and multiplied by an anti-symmetric matrix in the same indices. Okay, so you will see the product is always zero. Got it? Okay. So now let's say if this is symmetric. Okay, so G I K is how many components it is having? No, no. Let's I goes from zero to three. K goes from what? Zero to three, so that means it is having sixteen entries. It's a four by four matrix, is it? So it's simply a four by four matrix. Now impose now the symmetry. So when I am saying it is symmetric matrix, what does it mean? So the elements over the diagonal are the same as the elements below the diagonal. Feel it? So you are having this very symmetric. So this is your diagonal. So the elements here are same as here. So now let's count the how many independent numbers are there. Independent are what are the diagonal elements? Is it? So these are four. Next are three. So next are two. Next is one. These elements are same as here. Okay. So we don't need to count. So how many are there? Ten. So it means so this G I K has ten linearly independent. <coughs> Entries. Okay. So in other words, G I K. So I can write this G I K X has ten independent functions. Remember this thing. In four-dimensional space-time, G I K contains what? Are these matrix tensor contains ten independent functions? Okay. It is the function, or it is a Okay, it contains ten independent variables. So much of ten, or rather ten independent, not variables, ten independent entries. I should say. Okay, got it. Okay, so now let's look at this matrix tensor. Since this depends on space-time, okay. So if you look at the Minkowski matrix, Minkowski matrix was something eta i k. That is the constant, like this. Feel it? Have only the four independent entries. So much, sir. Now, since we are looking at the uh, curved space time, okay, or we are looking from the geometry. Now, let's look what a okay. In how many cases this G I K X can get um, okay these coordinate dependent functions? So much, sir. So now let's look when this G I K can be dependent on what? Or what are the possibilities when this G I K will depend on coordinates? So, समझ जाओ? What kind of possibilities exist there? समझ जाओ? So if you look at the accelerating frame of reference, just the example what we have done. We started from an inertial frame of reference. We transformed from an inertial frame of reference was simply defined by that eta I K. क्या लिख? Minkowski space time. Now when you move from an inertial to the non-inertial frame, the matrix got a dependence on x. Is it? That t component one plus g x by c square is it? So that got actually dependent on what? Which component? On the coordinates. So much of this is one uh, one thing. Okay, so that arises only because you go from one coordinate system to the another coordinate system. Just as a coordinate effect, you can see. Another case is where this uh, g i k or whether there exists genuinely the curvature of the space. Okay, let's think of the sphere. Okay, I will put the example. So let me take the examples, and maybe you can see it, what I mean by that. Okay. So let's say you are having the G I K. Right. So there are two ways, two possibilities. Okay, through which uh, it takes the space-time dependence. Okay, two possibilities. 
I mean, we are looking, we are not looking in the Minkowski space time, we are looking in the general uh, space, okay? Whether it is space time or the space, okay? Two possibilities that give rise to coordinate dependence. So the first possibility is, okay, if space-time is flat, that means inertial coordinate system, okay, and is described by, okay, and transformed to a non-inertial. So much now. So the example we studied for this thing, we started from an inertial observer that is watching an accelerating coordinate system, you are actually transferring from the inertial coordinates to the non-inertial coordinates. In that case, this matrix depends on the coordinates. Another is the generally uh, this thing, where there is a genuine uh, curvature in the road space. So these will uh, appear. I mean, what does it mean by the curvature? Okay. Will necessarily. Necessary space time okay. So let's take the example. Let's illustrate them by the examples. Okay. So let's take the of the first case. Let's take this kind of matrix. D S square. Okay, so let me first uh, let's do it this way. Let's take uh, without going to this curvature. This is So we are having in the Cartesian coordinates. Let's run. So it is something. So I will take the uh, let's take two dimensional case. So what it describes me? It simply describes me the length of a line, of a line element in our flat space. I am not taking here timer. Huh? You take here the flat space. Okay. Let's say it is x and y, and you take actually a line segment, some line segment described by what? So dx square will be simply as dx square plus dy yes. square. This a straight line segment in the flat space. And what is g here? So this I can write as when you say what is g? What is g? G is okay. So can I write it like also? Oh, so let me. I got so g i k. You can write it like this thing. D x i dx g so you can write now let's compare if you are not able to do it so let's write g 0 0 so x 1 will be x okay x 1 will be x plus g 0 1 dx dy plus g 1 0 dy dx plus g 1 1 dy and dy so this is dx square so what is the coefficient here 1 so it means what is your g 0 0 it's 1. What is G01? That is 0. What is G10? That is 0. What is G11? That's 1. So what is your matrix here? So your matrix is simply this GIK. That's 1, 0, 0, 1. So it's a constant matrix. Clear? So much over? Okay, so let's take. Uh, so you got it? Okay. So let's first write the matrix of certain objects. Okay, so let's take the another, uh, let's rewrite this thing in a, another coordinates, in the polar coordinates, okay? So you are having the polar coordinates R and theta. What will be the matrix? ds square is equal to dr square plus r square d theta square, is it? Can I write? So if you are not able to know it, so how I write polar coordinates, x is equal to r, cosine of theta, y is equal to r, sine of theta. So now let's write. So what will be dx? So it is dr cosine of theta minus r sine of theta d theta. Then you are hang dy as dr sine of theta plus r cosine of theta d theta. Now let's take this thing, dx squared plus dy squared. 
So what is that equal to? So it will be simply P R square plus R square. So in other words, in polar coordinates, your uh, metric element is what? Sorry, line element is like this. R square. Okay. What is your G? So G will be simply 1, 0, 0, R square. Apparently it depends on the coordinate, is it? But you are having the same flat space. The same flat space you are written what? It is the example of the first case. Eh? Is that true? So much more. You have written the flat space in terms of the new coordinate system. So this dependent coordinate dependence of G arises from where? Just the transformation from the Cartesian coordinate system to the polar coordinates or from um, okay, this Cartesian to the curvilinear coordinate because R theta describes the curvilinear coordinate, simplest of the curvilinear coordinates, is it? So much more. It's simply the coordinate effect. Clear? Okay. So let's do it this way. So you got how to calculate the matrix? You got it? Okay. So let's do it. Now let's go to uh, our problem. Okay, so what we are looking at, then I will go to the more detailed example. So the first case, so let me assume you are having this gs square as, so let me take a coordinate system, okay. So let's assume a coordinate system described by some alpha and beta, okay. Alpha and beta are two variables such that alpha goes from 0 to pi, so let me check. Yes, 0 to infinity, I'm sorry. Okay, it is the same thing as r, so I will use this thing, beta is some, sorry, 2, 5, yes, sir, go to 0. So that means beta is the angle, alpha is what? Distance, is it? Uh, radial distance, you can think. So now let's write in this very coordinate system the metric element, line element, sorry. So let's say, let's assume the line element in this very coordinate system is like this thing g alpha square plus alpha square d beta square. It is the same thing. g r square plus r square d theta square. Be sure? So what it means? So you see, since alpha is a coordinate, the matrix is here a coordinate dependent. Now our question is, is this genuinely the curvature or is it a coordinate dependence? Uh, uh, sorry, is it simply the transformation from one coordinate to the another coordinate system? That means, if I write a matrix, Okay, in uh, okay, if I write the line element and from that I get a matrix, am I able to perform a coordinate transformation such that I can reduce this uh, line element to the Cartesian form? Or in other words, I can reduce the matrix to a constant form at least. You got my point? What I am saying, let's say I am giving you a line element. From line element, you derive what? Your matrix. And it depends on, let's say, on coordinate something. And you don't know whether it's a genuine cur curvature of the uh, underlying space or not. What you need to do? You try to figure out what is a coordinate transformation. Or does there exist a coordinate transformation such that I can reduce my this matrix to a constant matrix. So, what is the matrix here? Tell me. So, the matrix here is, so, 1, 0, 0, alpha square. Is that true? So, it is dependent on the coordinates. So, so for, for this thing, since I can say this actually the cylindrical coordinates or you can say it is in the polar coordinates. Let me figure out a coordinate transformation sum x is equal to alpha cos of theta, sorry, uh, cos of beta, y is equal to alpha sine of beta. Clear? Can I write it? Can I write it? So now if I, uh, in this very coordinate system, so, if I now make this kind of coordinate transformation, I can show that this gs square is simply equal to what? dx square plus dy square. What this is? So, what is the matrix here? So, it's 1, 0, 0, 1. So, 1 and 1, diagonal form, is it? So, that means I have brought this matrix to the diagonal form. Clear? So, in other words, what this, um, uh, this means, okay, what this means? So, this Depend, coordinate dependence only arise because of a coordinate transformation. So, so that means it is not a genuinely curved space time or curved space. So it is simply a coordinate effect. Now look here. 
So I have a transformer to hold up the coordinate space here. Let's say you are having the coordinate space from 0 to infinity and L 0 to 2 pi, is it? So the coordinate space in this new coordinate uh, system x and y, what are the values of x and y? They go from 0 to infinity, is it? Because that's simply x, x variable and y variable on the x-axis and y-axis, correct? So they go from 0 minus infinity to plus infinity and both the variables. So that means I have transformed this coordinate system totally into what? Into this Cartesian coordinate system. So much more. Or in other words, I can transform this system to that very system in full. The entire space. So much more. So that means I have performed a global transformation under which I can do this thing. So this, uh, we call it as a global transformation. Um, uh, as a reason, because I am transforming the entire coordinate space, I am looking, it's actually a flat. Okay? So the all the space, it is flat. So you want to cut Now let me give you another example to uh, make you understand. Take off a football. That's a sphere, is it? So which is the flat piece of the football? No. Yes. So you take that small element on that thing. It is not the entire space of the sphere that's flat, is it? So that means you cannot reduce the entire space of the surface of the sphere to a flat space, is it? So that is why we call that a genuine curvature of the space. So let's take that example. Correct? What we mean by a genuine curvature and no curvature? So think of a circle and the cylinder. Let's say you are having a sheet of paper and the cylinder. They are one and the same thing. They don't have the curvature. I mean to say they are actually flat objects. You can actually uh, cut the cylinder and you can make it as a sheet of paper. So that means the entire uh, su surface of the cylinder you can transform it to a flat space. But you cannot make the entire sphere to a flat space. Can you do it? Can you cut the uh, sphere in such a way, let's say the football in such a way, you can make it as a flat mat? <laughs> you can't, is it? So there will be always bends and so on. Huh? Clear? So let's take this kind of example. So this is the example of the first kind, the first situation why this can arise. Okay, general theory of relativity deals actually with this kind of question. Uh, okay. Uh, whether the gravitational, okay, so gravitational effect is, I mean, <coughs> whether they are due to genuinely the curvature of the space time or they are due to the coordinate effects. So, so this is the fundamental question of the general relativity. Okay. So let's take the surface of the sphere. <coughs> okay. How we define the surface of the sphere? <coughs> Not the sphere. Okay. So how we define, let's say if you are having a sphere. So x square plus y square plus z square is equal to, let's say of the constant radius r square. So much more. So this defines me what? So what is a point? <laughs> what does this define me? It defines the surface of the sphere. So much more. It, what we call actually the equation of the sphere. So much more. So because this is equal to r square. That means exactly the boundary of the sphere. Eh? If it is greater than r square, that means it is the points outside the sphere. Or if it is less than r square, it means the points inside the sphere. So I am taking here on the surface. So that means this is surface of the sphere, is it? How many variables are involved? Three variables. R is constant. Okay, x, y, and z. So how many constants are there? One constant. This is a constant equation. Clear? So how many variables will define the surface now? Two variables. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the two variables. Let's say uh, you are hanging Cartesian coordinate system like this thing. Dx square plus dy square plus dz square. Okay. So now from here you have to actually eliminate one coordinate. So you are hanging, let's say, so it will be x dx plus y dy plus z dz. That's equal to zero. Okay. Eliminate one dx. And you will put it only in the form of, let's say, um, dx square, okay, some term here, dx square plus some term here, dy square. Eliminate z. 
So much of So you can sum So you will see it. Um, I mean, the cons. I mean, the term is what will come. That will depend on x and y. So much of So you can sum Just eliminate from that very equation uh, this dz. You need to eliminate from this very equation one dz. Let's see. You can eliminate dy or dx. Okay. <coughs> so I what I want to say. Let's instead of doing it this way. Let me take. The element in the spherical polar coordinates. Let's say you are having this line element. So let's take a radius is equal to one. Samashima. So let me write some d alpha square plus sine square. Okay, alpha d theta square. So it means d theta square. Okay. So shall I write theta? So let's write theta square, theta square, and this will be. So much is this a line element? So it simply specifies be the line element on the surface of the sphere because R is constant, is it? So the first term will go over. Dr is equal to zero. So much of it. So now the point is that can I make a trans coordinate transformation such that this can be brought? Okay. So now what is the L, uh, this matrix? So matrix is simply one zero zero. So that depends on what. The coordinates, is it on the angle? This sine square theta. It depends on this very coordinate. Now the question is that can we make this of that form? That dx square plus dy square. What we did in case of the polar coordinates. Okay. So there is no coordinate transformation which will make this. Uh, I mean, uh, to the Cartesian form. So much, sir. You cannot reduce it to the form where the elements of the g are uh, constant. So much on, so you cannot so much. I mean, the entire coordinate system you cannot move in such a way that you can make the elements of this matrix tensor to be constant. So much on. So in that sense, the, uh, this uh, surface of the sphere defines a genuine curvature. But there is one possibility what you can do. You can look take a one point on the surface of the sphere in the neighborhood of that very point. You can make make certain transformations such that the g will become what. A constant. Think of the pads on the football. Is it? So what they are actually? So think them as an infinite simple pads. So much of you take those pads to be flat. Is it? So when you take them to be the flat, what does that mean? So locally you are having a coordinate system which mimics a um, I mean the Cartesian kind of coordinate system or an inertial kind of coordinate system. Clear? So so much of but globally it is not. So you want so much. You got my point? Yes. Uh huh. Yes. So that is uh, 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 I mean topic. We'll look it from actually the Riemann curvature. Okay. So here we are just looking at the surfaces. Okay. I am just giving you the concept of the surface. Okay. From a surface, how you can define whether it is a curved surface, a genuinely curved surface or not. This G actually gives you the intrinsic geometry of the given space, okay? But there are another kinds of curvature. Let's say uh, what we call the extrinsic curvature. That's given by the Gauss, huh? okay? But we will not go into those uh, details. We will look only at the G, okay? When you are, I am giving you a, some arbitrary random uh, kind of matrix, okay? Whether it is genuinely a curved matrix or not, you need to figure out its what we call as a Riemann curvature tensor, okay? So that from that perspective, that turns out to be zero. So then you can say your matrix is actually flat. It describes your flat space time. If that is non-zero, it means uh, it's what a curved, a genuinely curved space time. So now the point is here. Shall we stop here?